Good morning, John. Remember when vlogs were just vlogs? When there were just people talking to the camera, almost like a diary entry, but you were just talking? Sometimes just what was going on in their lives, like a video, almost like a diary entry, like a video blog. Let's do that for a second. No script, another written down. Just want to be honest for a moment about the fact that over the last year, I have worked really hard to just drive myself insane. There's this weird thing where like Nerdfighteria and this community is really part of the things that we do in on the internet in business. And then additionally, I don't want to talk too much about the business I'm doing because there are real people who are working really hard at all of the companies and like having a bunch of external communications is uncomfortable. To be like, oh, so here's the company who I that I work for and the founder and former CEO of this company is like on the internet freaking out about how he's made himself go insane. And like, that's not what CEOs do. They're not on the internet freaking out. They're usually on the internet being like, I'm so great and perfect and I've got everything under control. I don't have anything under control. The thing that I have the most control over is my own self. And that's, I'm so bad at controlling it. After I finished cancer treatment, I felt pretty bad, but also I felt was feeling a lot better. So there was like a nice balance there. So like, maybe I don't feel perfect, but like in comparison, I had a huge amount of energy. And also like some combination of, it is possible that the amount of time I will be alive is not as long as I thought. There's just like more presence to the fact that this is finite, that I only get whatever number of years I get, which was less present for me before cancer. I know that that's not the case for everybody, <laughs> including you, but that was the case for me. So I wanted to do all this stuff. So in the last year I've been working on a book about cancer and cancer treatment, the biology of cancer, which is very cool. I also wrote uh, a stand-up comedy special, I toured that special, I recorded that special, I released that special, all that stuff happened. And also trained to be a comedian, I didn't have experience in that, so I did, wasn't able to just like do it, I had to learn how to do it. So that was all going on. At the same time, I was deciding whether or not I wanted to remain stepped down from my positions at DFTBA and Complexly, where I was formerly CEO when I got diagnosed. Now at DFTBA, we had, were already in the process of hiring a CEO for for that role to replace me. So that was happening. So I wasn't gonna go back to that, but I was considering going back to my leadership position at Complexly. I decided not to do that. But there's also like all of these other things going on. Those two companies matter a huge amount to me. And I wanna talk a little bit about why. And I think that in maybe this one way, I'm, I'm not that different from Logan Paul. <laughs> maybe, 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 am I? Uh, yes. Like Logan Paul, launching products is about something. Mr. Beast launching products, KSI, and like all kinds of creators, Marcus Brownlee launched a product. I, the hollow taco nail polish is, is amazing. And I think that a lot of creators are driven in that same direction for a reason. I wanna understand that about myself. Like what's my reason? And I think it's basically the same reason for all, every creator who does something like this, which is there's a lot of different paths for a creator, but one that is pretty common is you get attention and you're like this is amazing and i love this and then you're that kind of wears off and then you start to make money and you're like this is amazing and i love this and then you have enough of that as well eventually and then you have to figure out like what to do with the attention so like some of the money comes passively through youtube or whatever but like some people are better at turning that attention into money than other people. And like money is really good. It doesn't make you happy. We've seen plenty of cases where being wealthy doesn't make you happy, but it solves a lot of problems and having fewer problems increases <laughs> the potential for happiness. But then you have to ask like, wh wh why am I still doing this? Like once you kind of have enough, why are you still doing it? And the answers to that question are really interesting to me. Like for some people, they say, this is too much cognitive weight. It's too much stress. It's too much load. I have a nest egg, I paid for my kid's college, whatever. And I'm just gonna like scale back and not like try and grow much more or I'll just stop, you know, I'll just stop making stuff. It's not worth the stress. And that's amazing. I don't know that that will ever be me, but maybe someday it'll be me. Maybe, <laughs> it seems, seems unlikely, but it's easier, I think, to keep doing it because you've already got all of this self-worth invested in your identity as a creator. And you've got like tools, like you've got money, you've got people who listen to you, you've got an audience, you've got, ideas that because you have these tools, you're like, suddenly you have ideas that you never would have had before because you didn't have those tools before. And you also have your identity as a creator. I think about Christine a fair amount, even though we don't know each other very well, because Hollow Taco is so great. If you don't know, Christine is a nail art YouTuber and she launched her own brand of nail polish that's just very good. It's nice, of course, that there is more of a built-in product for her. There's like a logical extension there. 
So if you're like a coffee YouTuber, it makes sense that you would go and make coffee. But at the root of it, like there's one piece of that that's like, okay, I have this. What am I going to do with it? That's going to be new and interesting, impactful and positive, something that my audience wouldn't feel put off by, and also might be a part of having like a bunch of money. And there are certain creators, I think, who are just a lot more focused on the money part. Like, I think that it's very clear that Mr. Beast wants to be the first YouTube billionaire. That's what, that's like kind of what the thing is oriented toward. And that makes sense to his audience that that's would be what he was oriented toward. And I'm talking about this like completely off the cuff because I want to know why I'm making the decisions I've made and to try and get a hold on the thing. Like, I do want to do these things, but I also want to be less anxious. I don't want to use the word stress here because I've always like found to my work to be somewhat stressful and sometimes that's really positive stress and sometimes that goes over the line. And so I want to use another word here and it's simply like anxiety. So like I want to feel less anxious, which cancer didn't help with that. I have a more anxiety now. It feels like built in, like during, you know, diagnosis and treatment, I like, I like that muscle got stronger. And even in situations where I don't have a th reason to be scared, anxiety is like they're searching for things to be scared about. Or maybe they're real. I don't know. Like, that's the thing. <laughs> like, is that the case? Is it irrational? Or are they real things that I really should be afraid about? I don't know. But I would like to experience that emotion less because it makes my tummy hurt all of the time. I guess that might be underselling it. Um, but like my doctor, when I finished treatment was like, one thing you want to do is avoid undue stress. And I'm like, well, that's, God. Psh, let's like pretend you didn't say that one. I just think there's a, an amount of this that's, that's natural where you're here and this is cool, but you all, you kind of always want to be doing something else. You're getting these new tools. You didn't start as a YouTuber because you didn't like attention or you didn't like to do interesting things. And so you like are, are stacking things up on top of each other. And in my life there, I, I, in my mind, I kind of think of them in th three or four buckets. There's stuff that's like Hank Green where I just want to like make stuff fast, do weird things, understand platforms, live my life on the internet professionally and have that be fun. And like that's, I've always done that. Vlogbrothers has been the biggest outlet for that, but there are others. There is another that is definitely complexly, so SciShow and Crash Course and, and everything else that com complexly makes. Obviously the biggest and most impactful thing I've ever helped to start. And now it is really big and impactful. And there's like always stuff going on there that, that like could benefit from me, whether that's promoting a new study hall course or letting everybody know the Crash Course coin is coming out or giving feedback and input on SciShow titles and thumbnails. And I love doing all that stuff. Like that's all stuff that I think would be a wonderful career for me if it were the only thing I did, you know? The thing about that is it's so good when it's working and and like there are no problems. But then when there are problems, like, like we're getting fewer views on SciShow or like people aren't signing up for a study hall course and we really want people to. Similarly, DFTBA slash, this is kind of two, DFTBA, Dot com, which is a company that works with creators to create products and help sell them and manage their logistics and financing and customer support for that stuff. Uh, that is over there. And like sometimes it has problems. Sometimes it loses a client and we have to figure out how to deal with that, you know, or sometimes we're worried the ports are going to shut down or something, you know, there was like all of COVID, which made it much harder to run a business like that. And then there's Good Store, which is a newer thing that, that is really about like, okay, I, like I see it not differently from Logan Paul and Prime. It's just that the values are different. Like Prime is about, you know, like Prime is about what a, I don't Prime is about whatever Prime is about. I don't know what Prime is about. Uh, but it's, it's, I'm sure there's got like a bunch of brand stuff around it. Bunch of vibes. Energy drink vibes. And like that makes sense for like a Logan Paul thing to make. And John, for us, it makes sense to try and do something totally different. To not just think about like what's a great product, but like what's a great model? What's a great different way to do this? And to have the opportunity to say, all right. Can you build an e-commerce company that gives all of its profit away? That's so interesting to me. It's so hard to not do it. Like I can't not do that. And like Goodstore is a big, pretty big company now and is doing really well and donated millions of dollars to charity last year. We'll donate millions of dollars to charity this year. And the growth has slowed and that 
you know, I, like that's not really what I want. And how much energy do I want to put toward making sure that it continues to grow as fast as it can? How much of the relationship that I have with, like the credibility that I have with an audience, the relationship I have with an audience, the, the, the feeling of community that I have, how much of that can I leverage? How hard can I lean on that? Can I do that in a way that doesn't feel bad to the people who don't have the money to spend? What's the balance there? And if it doesn't feel like it's like super working right now, can we just like shrink a little bit or coast a little bit? And with all of these things, it's fine to stay the same size and it's fine to grow, but it's very hard and unpleasant to shrink. And so I want to work to balance all of those needs, you know, to to not lean too hard on nerd fighteria, to to promote stuff, but at the same time to do what I can so that the companies can continue to do their work effectively and treat everybody well and keep everybody employed. And that balance is is hard. So I guess what I I want to say is I believe in all of the things that we're doing. I believe that good store if it were only ever this size, would have done and will do a tremendous amount of good. I think that it would be better if it got bigger and we're thinking about how to do that. So yeah, I believe in all of it. I believe in complexly. I believe in study hall, trying to lower barriers to education, like really focusing on how, like what the barriers are and how to lower them. With Good Store, just giving money away feels great. Having that impact feels great. With my personal stuff, it's very fulfilling and very fun. Um, and very interesting. And I've learned so much writing this cancer biology book. I believe in SciShow. Like I've always loved and been excited by, you know, science communication for the masses. And that's like, it is like SciShow is one of the big players in that space now. That's amazing. There's nothing here I don't love, but I guess what I want to say to the people who stuck around through this whole thing is I want you to be a part of these things however you want to be a part of them. And there's a lot here. There's a lot of stuff that's going on that like I feel really good about. But I would like them to in the same way that like Prime has exit velocity and is now not all about Logan Paul and, and KSI. It's about, it's just like, it's a brand. I want this community to feel like we're all on a quest together and like aligned that even if we're not buying stuff from good store, good store is good. And we uh, are all sort of like pro good store messaging. Cause of course, like the coffee that good store makes is, is really artisan stuff and it tries to be perfect in like every way. And that makes it more expensive. So like not everybody's gonna buy coffee that way. And not everybody in this community should buy coffee that way. You should buy coffee in the way that you feel good about, like is good for your personal finances. But like, I just don't want people to feel they're not a part of it if they're not spending money. But I also don't want me to feel like I can't let people know about this thing that I'm really excited about. But at the same time, I wanna be honest and open and like say it out loud in public. I can't do all of these things. Even if I believe in them all really deeply, I can't run all of these things. I can't have my fingerprints on all of these things. There's a lot of stuff that goes on at Complexly and DFTBA that I don't have anything to do with. And I just hire people I can trust and let them go. And if they make decisions that I wouldn't make, I mostly have to be like, yeah, of course, they're different people than me and they see things different. And that doesn't mean it's gonna be worse, just means it's going to be different. It's been a long time since I have been involved in Crash Course day to day. That thing is running on its own with a team of people who have goals for it. And if it was me, it couldn't do what it's doing. I wouldn't have enough. Like they had to get everything approved by me. Like nothing would ever get done. Like I, I'm extremely disorganized. That's like a lifestyle for me. Like I, I'm always going to be extremely disorganized. But there's also a piece of me that is aware that if a decision, like decisions getting made by the companies that I started, people will see those decisions as mine, even if I didn't make them. And even if it would have been actually worse for me to be like in the trenches approving everything, like miserable for the people on those teams. But also I think it would limit the ability of those projects to do good and be big and reach people. I'm just not that kind of leader. Like there's some amazing, like absolutely leaders who can be really hands-on and always be, you know, like a, a sort of more granular CEO. But like, there's a reason I stepped down as CEO. I prioritize screwing around on the internet. I prioritize working on a new book or doing a stand-up special. All that stuff is really important to me. And I'm also, I don't know how to not do it. 
I don't have that level of self-control. So I've had to step back from that in a lot of places. But at the same time, I haven't like said that I'm doing that. And I want people to know that. I want people to know that when I say that I'm not the CEO of Complexly or DFTBA anymore, it means that I have like different jobs than I used to have. And they're weird. I have a couple of important jobs. Like I do strategic audience development stuff. Like how do we get more traffic? Because I understand YouTube. And like when we're working on like a new, exciting new thing, I, they're going to want feedback from me. And like all the people on the SciShow team, I'll be in like the weekly Slack message about thumbnails and titles. Like I want those things to be able to do the stuff on their own that they do. Um, but I think that I should also be honest about the fact that like I started these things, but I feel like someday the kid goes to college, you know? And I feel good about that. Like I prefer that. A lot of founders really want to like stay in control for the whole time. I don't. That's a totally foreign idea to me. Like the, the more I have tried to stay in charge of things, the less happy I've been. Also, I think it negatively impacts the success because I'm so scattered. This video, as I think through what I just did over the last uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes of talking here, I think that it, I think that it makes sense. <laughs> I think that there's like a cohesive thing here that like I am hungry in a lot of different ways. In the same way as a lot of creators, to do cool things with the tools I've been given, to live life th while I have it. And I have an inability to constrain myself, to stick to even the, like the what I think are the most impactful things, or even the things that I enjoy the most. Like I can't stick to one thing. And so because there are so many, there are a few different clear sources of stress. One is balancing what I feel like I can ask for from my audience to, to like, uh, you know, like come along with us on this journey as we try to build Good Store into a thing that donates a, a lot of money to charity. I'm excited about that. I want to bring people along on that journey without them feeling like they are being forced into it. Like, I think this is a thing that we're all building together, which is why to me, like, I don't feel like any of these ideas are good if I'm making a bunch of money off of them, because those are things that we're doing together. Like, I feel fine making a bunch of money off of my book. I'm going to sell the book. I'm going to make that money. That's going to be my money. Because I did that, <laughs> you know? Like, I did cancer, and then I am a science communicator. I combine my experience as a cancer patient with my experience as a science communicator with my ability to get in touch with a lot of experts in a field and my experience as a writer. And so I like pull, pull all that together. And like, that's a thing that I did myself. And so that's my money. But Good Store is not a thing that I did by myself. It's a thing that we did together. And so I would feel really weird if, if like that was a thing that we were building to make me a bunch of money. In the same way, I would feel really weird if Complexly made me a bunch of money, which it, do it does not. That feels like a real difference that matters to me. But I think some of my chief sources of stress are it not feeling that way to everyone, the balance between doing stuff that isn't about that and trying to keep those companies healthy. That's a source of stress. And then a third source of stress is knowing that like my strategy is found, build, give away, like the, like I send my kids to college early kind of life. And but then feeling like people don't understand that and, and they don't and they think that I'm doing all of these things and that it isn't just a teams of amazing people doing all these things, making decisions on their own without my oversight and oftentimes different decisions that I would make. And I think that that's good. Like, just like I will have a son who goes to college and he will make decisions that I do not want him to make, <laughs> you know, that's how it has to be. Like, that's better. That's way better than me making all of his decisions for him. Now that I've said all of that out loud, like, I think that those are the things that I'm freaked out by. I think that that's what's causing a lot of the anxiety. The competing interests of all of the things, they need me sometimes. I feel like I don't always have the best grip on how this community is feeling. There's ways to, to get a better grip on it. Let's do that census again. And maybe like, I haven't been vlogging enough. Like maybe too much of our videos are like video because that's what YouTube is now. Maybe not enough of them are like, listen to me talk for 40 minutes. <laughs> John, <laughs> I'll see you on Tuesday. Thank you, by the way, to Milo for editing this video. Uh, because it is so long, I was not able to do it. I don't love <laughs> uploading videos to Vlogbrothers that I didn't edit, but I don't know that this would have happened otherwise. So we're, ch we're doing what we can with the tools that we have. And I've been working with Milo and Hank's channel for a long time now, and I really trust her and she's great. She's really fantastic. It's been a great collaboration.